Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Today's video is a video about the Dino Mule when I tested several different intake manifolds with a two barrel carburetor. Now, I know as you're listening to this, you're thinking, why in the world did you test with a two barrel carburetor? Most of the drag race guys think that. And, and I totally get it, because you're like, why would you intentionally make the engine make less power? Well, here's the reason why. In many circle track classes, they're required to run a two barrel carburetor. So um, because of that, they'll have like, some of them even have unlimited. As long as you have a cast iron block and aluminum heads and you can run whatever, you just have to run this spec legal two barrel carburetor. And the reason why a lot of the circle tracks do that is they're trying to keep the classes closer because it is much harder to make a huger um, gain with a two barrel than it is with a four barrel. For instance, you could do a lot of work and you might only gain five horsepower with a two barrel carburetor, but you might gain 20 with a four barrel carburetor. So in other words, it keeps the fields tighter. So you don't have some person walking away from everybody else. However, to be honest with you, at least that's the idea. They're still just not that way. You've got people that spend more money seem to always do well. So anyway, the other reason for it, and this makes sense for several of you that watch my channels, because I kind of want to know, and maybe you do too, how much CFM difference does a carburetor make as far as horsepower? Because we're talking about the four barrels tested was a thousand CFM. Now this two barrels, 500 CFM. Now I know there's different ratings or whatever that for the two barrel versus uh, four barrel, at least that's what I've heard. I haven't done a lot of research with that, so I don't have an answer for that. So I don't want to misspeak on that. But I know from the advertised ratings on how they are, um, the four barrel that I have should flow almost double what this two barrel does. So will that translate to almost double power or, or how much horsepower loss? Well, today you're gonna find that out because that's what was tested on the dyno. Now, the reason why these four manifolds are here is because these four are the ones that were tested, kinda. This manifold was, but if you look at it now, you're like, man, that doesn't look, we did you test it that way? No. Um, so this is a Brodex BM1000. I tested it out of the box. It's currently ported, getting ready to ship out. I'm just using it for the uh, video. Uh, so you know what I'm talking about. This one is actually the Professional Products Hurricane version one. Version two is actually still on the engine, but it looks very close to this. So I'm just using this for the video. These two were the actual exact ones. This first one's a Holley 300-110. This is your um, Keith Dorton version. And right underneath it is, this is the exact one used, the Elder Rock 2925. Now, just to save myself some room up here, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, this one right here, this Holly sucked on the four barrel and it also sucked on the two barrel. But don't worry, I'm gonna show you the results. So you can see how bad it was. It just wasn't good at all, um, either way. And, it, and don't take that as a blanket statement either because it could have just been this combination. And you might say, well, what was your engine again? Just to recap, it's a 400 small block Chevy, 11.2 compression ratio, AFR, 195 enforcer heads, absolutely stock. It's got an Urson cam in it. It's a 260, 270. It's got 690-ish lift and a 108 lobe separation. So it's a mild lobe. They actually use that lobe on circle track stuff. So it seems like it works out perfect for this video. But anyway, for whatever reason, this intake manifold did not like that combination, just didn't do well. So anyway, there's our stuff. There's your manifolds. I'm getting that out of the way. We're down to these three. These three are the ones to pay attention for. When tested with the four barrel out of the box, so this one currently is ported, so this is not how it ran on the dyno. Um, this one's also been modified because this was going back to the dyno. So not how it ran. They were all stock when ran for the mule. But on the four barrel, if you remember, this one was placed second place because this is version one. Version two actually won, and not by much, by maybe one horsepower. Um, after the Hurricanes, this Brodix BM1000 was third. Way down the list was this Elder Rock 2925. When the two barrels went on, that was not the case. The winner by far was the Elder Brock. So this actually brought up a really interesting question is why was this one so much better with a two barrel as opposed to four barrel? Well, let's look at the numbers and get a better idea what's happened. So if 
For those that don't know, this is the dyno book. It has every dyno test that I did in here, um, that I've done videos on, is in here. It has all the data from other stuff too, as far as the head flow numbers. So there's your dyno stuff, still dyno stuff. There's flow figures, there's calculation, there's flow, like this one's flow with the exhaust pipe attached on the super flow for the heads. Um, that's some um, with the swirl numbers are on for the heads. That's the uh, reverse flow. So I floated in reverse direction to see what it would do. Uh, flow to all eight cylinders with the intake attached. So all this stuff's in this book and it costs 38 bucks. And if you want to get it, you can go to my website, wengines.com and there's a link to my um, store and you can go to do that there. Or if you're like, I don't understand what to do. Can you, how else can I do it? Just go to, uh, you can email me winegardenerracing at gmail.com and say, hey, I want a book and then I'll send you an invoice you can pay that way. Or you can just, like I said, go to my website, wengines.com. You'll see a link there to go to my online store and then you can purchase it from there. Piece of cake, 38 bucks shipped. If you're like, well, that's an expensive book. Well, this cost me about 16 bucks to make. And I told you I wanna make 10 bucks on these. This cost me 16 bucks to make, $10 to ship. And so I'm in $2 credit card fee, it's $38. Before someone says, well, you could do a lot of these, this and this and this to save yourself money. True, but it cost me more time, so then I'd want to make more profit because time is money. But anyway, I know I'm not getting rich off these. So currently, although I've done pretty good as far as selling, I think I've sold 54. So as of right now, I've almost paid for the one dyno session, the last dyno session. So anyway, in this book, let's get to this stuff. So let me get my tab here. First, I want to look at it when they were on the four barrel. So the AFR one we don't have here because I didn't test with a two barrel. But this is the Elder Brock 2925, which is that manifold. And the Brodix is in blue, which is right here. This is the Brodix one. This is with the four barrel. because I want you to see this, how things flip badly. So if you look at this one, this is the four barrel, 1,000 CFM. The Brodix, the blue line, it's pretty much guaranteed almost the entire range it's better than the red line or the black line of the elder block i mean it's let I me mean, look how much difference is there between the black and the blue it's um pretty pretty significant right very significant this will not be the case as you look at the two barrel stuff so i just want to show you that first before we actually get to the uh two barrel so let's start off with this here's our raw numbers let me grab a pin all right, these are the raw numbers. Now remember, it made about five, six, five fifty-ish with the other Brock on a four barrel. The two barrel knocked it way down to four seventy-four, and look now at fifty-nine hundred. Before it typically peaked about sixty-two hundred. Nope, uh, fifty-nine hundred, four seventy-five horsepower, and the torque dropped to four seventy-six. Now the air fuel ratios look really lean. This was carburetor that was used. I'm not sure which one it is. It was one that Gary Dunsworth, that's where I dyno at, right there. He has a dyno carburetor that he's used that's spec legal and he uses it on all of his stuff. It's really good. Now, some people are also gonna ask about the adapter plate. It does have an adapter plate, but unlike the HVH ones where you can slide it back and forth. In other words, they have ones where you can move the two barrel this way or this way. His was locked in place, so it was the same position for every single intake. So that's the Elder Brock. Let's go to the other one. Here's the Brodix one. If you look, it made five or 474 ish at 6,000. And then our torque, see how much lower it is? 468. So not as good torque. Not at all. And by the way, it's a 500 CFM carburetor, but look, 564 CFM. We'll go back real quick and look at this one. Sorry, fat fingers. And look, 564 on this one too. So anyway, uh, continuing on. Here's your Holly. This one just didn't do good. It didn't do good in anything. Um, we have 466, it looks like, on as far as peak power, 467. And about, about the same torque, 465. Don't worry, I'm gonna have an overlay to show you. The last one, this was the intake that did the best of all the intakes on a four bar was this intake manifold. Bad port match and all. This was it. So I was thinking this might be the best one for a two barrel two. And you're going to see when you look at the graphs, it's really not. 475 and 6200 
which looking at the graph, that's a very interesting point right in this area. And then torque, 468. And it pulled a little bit less CFM than the others at 556. So now let's look at the graph because that's going to be the, the giveaway. Here's your graph. So we have the Elderbrock's in red. Brodix is in black. The Holly is in blue, as you could tell. And then this green is that hurricane. Now, this just plain as day shows how much better the Elderbrock is than the others. This is the Elderbrock. Look at this. This is, and by the way, this is 4,400 where we start the pool. Look how much more torque it makes through, the, through this lower range. Look at this. That's a huge, huge gap. So if you're coming off the corner, if you're a circle track guy, that's what you want. I mean, if you look at the peak power, which typically occurred about here, they're all really close with the exception of the blue line being the Holly. It's down almost the entire way. It's close there, never again. So besides the Holly, they're all really close as far as peak power. I mean, they're not that different. The torque though, I mean, from that Elderbrock, is pretty unreal. Um, it's so much better than the others. It's it's kind of mind blowing. So I, I I just don't have an answer for that. It's a, a very interesting question on why it did that, but it for sure was was definitely better here. So if you're wondering why it's walking away from you in the corner, um, there's your answer. It's leaving you. Here's the interesting about the hurricane. Now remember that hurricane was best by far on the four barrel. If you look at its green line, it's kind of, it's almost identical to the Brodix. So we have the green and blacks that we're looking at. They're really, they're neck and neck. You wouldn't tell them apart. I mean, they're so close. Some parts are a little bit further apart, but for the most part, up until right here, they're pretty much together, especially down through this range. They're almost identical. Um, there's a little bit of difference here and a really bigger difference here. This is the weird part about the hurricane from about 62 to 65, it's better. And you could tell it's better even than the Elderbrock. Um, the Elderbrock was in red, by the way. So if you look at it, you're like, wow, it's making more power there. So in this case, it's softer coming off the corner, but coming going into the corner, and if you, it should make a little bit more power because it looks like it's making more power and carrying it. Um, here in this range, so in the upper RPMs, it's actually better but it's not gonna make up for that, I can promise you. I mean, that's a huge jump. We're talking about 10 foot pounds of torque. Um, very big difference on the two barrel. So interesting stuff on this. I don't have any interesting ideas on why this thing on a two barrel is so good, but it is. I, I do not have an answer and I, I just don't. Now I did wanna show this one more thing because I know some of you might be thinking it. And it's in the book as well. I'm just trying to flip back as I put my thing on that. There we go. If you look at, this just happens to be the Hurricane. That's version three. Let's do the better one. Do the best. There we go. This is the best um, four barrel. It only pulled 657 CFM. If we look at the best two barrel, if you remember, it was 560. Yeah, 556. So we're all about that range, 560. I think that was the other one before that. The point being is that 100 CFM of difference in the carburetor, as far as this is what was measured, that 100 CFM of difference almost made, I mean, we we're making 560, made about 100 horsepower difference. So, and I don't want, I hate when people use like general rules, like they'd be like, you know, two horsepower per CFM, but this one was almost one to one. So for every, it, at this point, losing 100 CFM lost 100 horsepower. I don't think, I think it's more of a coincidence than it is anything else as far as those numbers matching. But um, it is something to think about, I guess. Anyway, um, hopefully you got something out of this video. I wish I had better answers, but I did want to share some stuff with you. Um, again, very interesting. And uh, don't think I'm done testing this because for those that don't know, I'm going back on the dyno probably in a couple of weeks now. I'm getting more caught up. I shouldn't say more caught up, but I'm spending more time in the shop doing stuff. So I'm getting more out just as far as behind, but hopefully we'll get to test some more stuff. 
just to kind of, and I'm gonna test more with two barrel too, so I have better answers for you because this one is gonna be tested with a two barrel now. I didn't before and I will now. This is version one of the Hurricane. I've done some work on it and I'm gonna see if it makes any difference now with a two barrel. This Super Victor, I'm gonna burr finish it, just that, just see if it makes any difference with a two barrel. The AFR, which had the Cloverleaf, no longer will have a Cloverleaf, and I'm going to test it with a two barrel and a few others as well. It should give me more information about that. So, because it is so weird to me that the Brodex was so good on the four barrel, but not as good as the Super Victor was with the four barrel um, or two barrel. So, it's like almost like they switched. It's strange but then if you look at the holly the holly was bad before and it was bad with four barrel it was bad with the two barrel it was just it was just odd so anyway this gives you guys something to think about don't think testing's over it still continues to keep going thanks for watching remember guys i'm no superman you guys take care